Welcome to our second round and the uh, introductory lesson to the second round of our self-paced learning series. We're so happy to have you here. Um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to locate you. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Too many things at once. Oh my goodness. Okay. Choto um, mate. So we have, last time we started with like a week zero and a week one, we've smushed those together because we think we can get going and then we've shortened down to four weeks. Um, so thanks for coming. We've done every other week just to give you a little bit more time. We know everybody is busy. So thanks so much for coming. We're happy to have you here and let's dive in. All right. Uh, my name is Matt Coleman, for those of you who don't know me. Hi, Rachel Johnson. I'm Sarah Nicarak. And what our goals are for today is just a brief intro. All right. And, and if you're interested based on what you hear and see today, uh, you'll have the opportunity to, to sign up for our learning series. So we're going to understand the basics of the modern classrooms framework, which is a particular way of doing the self-paced classroom. And then we're going to uh, take some time to uh, explore some of the exemplar units that are already on their website and then start to think about a grade or subject of course um just that you think you might want to implement some self-paced classroom kind of stuff in for your students either now or coming up next quad or um something like that Okay, to kind of get us rolling, we've got a really great video that gives you a, a really nice sort of overview of what the Modern Classrooms project and this model is all about. So um, it is about close to six minutes, so we'll play that. But really what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see an introduction to the key components of the model. You're gonna see some of the benefits and um, also see it kind of in practice in a few um, different examples here. So just while you're watching, we want you to think about things like, what do you like and what do you see? What do you notice? What do you wonder? I, I kind of like that kind of phrasing um, because then we'll give you a chance to hop on the mic afterwards and we'll chat about it a little bit. But um, let's just dive right into the video. Hi, Angel, how are you? Good. Nice job, Mr. 6.10. Um, so one of the toughest challenges students face when they walk into classrooms is they feel tense. They're worried about being put on the spot, especially if they're behind or don't understand the skill. When they come into our classrooms, they know they're picking up where they left off. We're seeing students' anxiety levels drop and their commitment and desire to master content increase. So I want to shout out Nathaniel and Will. They came on their own time. They got some videos going and they are ahead of pace. Eastern High School is located in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Being 100% free and reduced lunch, our students come to us with varied levels of academic performance. When I came to Eastern, I was sort of shocked with how broad the variety of learning levels was. We have students who have experienced a ton of trauma, who are behind on certain skill sets, are ahead in certain skill sets, have different subsets of experience when they go home. I quickly found out that my traditional model of teaching was not actually effective. So at that time, I realized I needed to make a shift, and I wanted to start by getting rid of the lecture at the beginning of my class. I'm gonna get started today with revision. So Santana and Jamie, just see me in the back real quick. The instructional model that I started implementing, there are three components, blended learning, self-paced structure, and mastery-based grading. What you would see today is really a controlled chaos environment. You have some students starting a new lesson, watching an instructional video, taking their guided notes. You have other kids working on actual lesson assignments, collaborating on whiteboards, really problem solving. And then you'll see other students working on exit tickets to achieve mastery. I like word class because it teaches you independence. For every lesson, we start off with a video, and then during the video, we have to take notes. Mr. Farah, he does the videos himself. You'll hear his voice every time you watch a video. In today's lesson, we're gonna focus on finding our local maxes and mins. I love it actually. You get to pause it, stop, and then go back and be able to rewatch the lesson over again until I fully understand and grasp the strategies and formulas. And once they're done watching that instructional video, they transition to some type of an assignment or activity. That's it for, for A, right? Mm -hmm. And then we already found it over there. 
And they'll say, find a rate of change in the weight of the oil. Everyone learns different. So you may be on lesson five, someone may be on three. It all depends on how you work. It's better than in a regular class where everybody has to stay on the same thing. The students help each other. So if you ahead, you might can help someone that's behind. Oh, okay, so after you get nine over four, you gotta divide the whole thing by four. Okay. All right. After that, there's an exit ticket. So an exit ticket is like a mini quiz. It's just a couple questions at the end of the lesson that really succinctly measure the student's ability to execute the activities they learn. So when a student has mastered an exit ticket, they move forward. When they don't, they have a reteach. You're assuming that your Y is zero. Get and then they try a new exit ticket until they've achieved mastery. Showtime. Did you get your exit ticket right? Well, your derivative is spot on. So because I am not delivering a lecture, I'm now free to work with students for the entirety of the class period. X equals four. Yes. Woo. Real quick, just remind me, what do you have to argue? Who is more responsible for perpetuating the Cold War? I'm gonna meet with a few people on topic sentences first. The video instruction makes me feel like I've been able to clone myself. Instead of needing to explain a concept and then re-explain the concept and then say it again, I'm giving the instruction on the video, which frees me up to work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Does your topic sentence directly answer the essay question? No, it doesn't. Why don't you I like it a lot. I never feel like I'm being rushed or feel like, oh, I already know this. Like, why am I going over this again? I always feel like I'm being challenged. I have a really accurate pulse check of where my students are. So-and-so is on 6.9 and they're about halfway through because I haven't seen an exit ticket yet. Whereas another student has advanced to 6.10 and I can even lean on that student to explain something to their peers. Okay, so you're only gonna use two quote explication charts. <laughs> your two strongest ones. I think it helps with your time management. A couple days ago, I had to stay at the school to get my work done because I was slacking a little bit. Like when you miss a class, and you can watch the video at home to catch up. Part of the reason this format works so well is we have a lower than average in-seat attendance rate in a traditional format. Once the teacher delivers that lesson, they're moving on to the next lesson the next day, and they don't get an opportunity to go back over it. I've had students who, sadly, in a traditional classroom, they simply would have failed the quarter due to their number of absences for legitimate reasons and often sometimes really heartbreaking reasons. With this way of teaching, that student can come really with more of a fighting chance and ultimately pass a quarter. In our model, if a student is experiencing distress and needs emotional support, it doesn't disrupt the larger classroom environment. I'm able to pivot and work with that student, discuss what's going on, while the other students are able to access the content and flourish. You have to do 10, then put parentheses in the calculator too. I did. Oh, you gotta it's supposed to be a positive, girl. Uh. <laughs>all right so there's a the intro video from edutopia um at this point i'm sure your wheels are spinning already you're wondering how could how would this work in my context you may be excited by some aspects of the model um so now's your chance what what did you notice what do you wonder we're a pretty small group here feel free to hop on the mic if you'd like or uh, type in the chat um and let's get the ball rolling what, what are you wondering about caitlin start us off yeah, so I actually uh, watched this video earlier because I started the 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 free course that they have. Yep. Um, and I got super excited because I do work in transitions, so with the essential level learners at White Oaks, and I'm also doing it um, online with the VSS. And my struggle is that I uh, kids are everywhere, right? I have students who are missing class who are really struggling, and then I'm like this other kid who needs challenging. And so when I saw this, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is awesome! <laughs> like I could totally do this." And and what um uh, and I'm teaching these courses again. I know I'm going to be teaching them in the fall, so I feel like when I invest, like that's the big thing, right? Is this takes a lot of upfront making those videos figuring out exit passes, how to keep it engaging. It's a lot of front loading, but I know that I'm gonna be teaching these courses for years to come. So if I do put this time in, 
um, I I feel like it's going to be worth it and helpful. Um, and so that's like so that th that's the thing I noticed is like there's a lot of front loading here as the teacher. The benefit seems amazing, um, but it can also it just seems very overwhelming. And especially if you're a new teacher and you're like, I don't know if I'm ever going to teach this course again. Like, do I want to invest all of this time making videos and and everything that I may never use again? So, but I was excited because I know I'm going to use this. So, that's my my comment. Yeah, I was the same kind of thing. I just <clears throat> just logged or just signed up today for the course, and it's always when we see presentations like this. At least in my subject area, you always see math or science. Like, oh, that makes sense. It's here's an example. Practice the example. But when you're in social sciences and stuff like that. It, you always seem like your lessons lead to conversations and how you can structure a classroom around, at least an open model classroom right, is is what, what I always find is challenging, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. As And as we dive into next, we'll see some exemplars. Um, you'll, you will have the opportunity to kind of take a look at, of course, the math class, because that, that's where it started with Kareem doing it in his math class, but history and, and grade six language and 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 just just a real range of topics. Um, and it looks very different in very different contexts. Like I, I was doing mm -hmm. a, a very similar model to this, you know, teaching photography, um, and it looked very different from what we just saw in the video um, just now, so. Um, and and I hear you, Caitlin, about the uh, the intimidation factor of 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 this model. And I think as well, there are opportunities to like dip your toe in, right? That that you're not like reinventing and and doing your entire program all uh, in in this kind of way. You know, you're you're doing one instructional video that you seem to do again and again and again and again, and you you want students to be able to access it. It's like you know, so you you dip your toe and you build your library, and it's um, you know, there's definitely kind of fun and friendly ways to go about it. Yeah, we're going through um, the mentorship program program <clears throat> kind of simultaneously as we're doing this. And we had we discovered that we were all making things way bigger than they needed to be. And so once you get rolling and you sort of see like, oh, this is like one lesson. There's one mastery check for this one lesson. It's it's like almost seems like you're doing it wrong because it's so small, but that's the point. So that was really relieving. And then it kind of, you get the, you get momentum and then you're like, oh, I could do a whole thing because this is so easy. So um, it's like deceivingly simple. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll see as we go along anyway, it's really. <laughs> All right. I think we're just going to keep on motoring here um, to make sure we've got that time to take a look at some of the exemplars. So um, in the video, they did talk about the modern classrooms model. So this is the model laid out here. And it's really sort of built on three pillars. The first pillar being blended instruction. So you're taking that you know, content that is teacher driven and creating videos that your students can then go and access um, afterwards. And in week two, next week, we're gonna dive further into what blended instruction looks like and how to make a great video. And we've got some really great tips and tricks to kind of help you get through that. Um, week three is gonna be focused on self-pacing structures. So we're gonna look at what self-pacing actually means because it doesn't mean no pace. Um, there is still, you know, paces that you need to have within your course and guidelines and sort of dates that your students are aiming for. And so we'll talk about some of the, you know, challenges there and different ways that you can structure that. And then uh, week four is going to dive into mastery based grading. And that really is the ultimate goal of this model is to be able to get students working through your course and demonstrating mastery of skills rather than just, you know, getting like 50% on a skill and then not having that as they kind of go through their later courses. So it's really the goal of the model. But um, like Matt was saying, like you can totally just dip your toes into this, maybe for now, for this year, you know, making a couple of videos here and there, that's great, you know, and, and just sort of build up and, um, Try not to get too overwhelmed by the model, okay? There are ways to just kind of dip your toes in for sure. 
So in terms of what to expect from our, uh, the series here with us, so we're going to run it kind of like a, a book study in that we're going to discuss um, practice and model aspects of the Modern Classrooms Project, the self-paced framework, as we work through each module. And we want to be very clear that this is not a sit and get style like PD. Um, we're going to be covering one module of the MCP or Modern Classroom Project free course every other week for four weeks. Um, and so the live sessions will be focused on collaboration and discussion around these modules to help support you as you build your resources for your self-paced classroom. And then between the sessions, we also have ways for you to participate in discussion via our Google chat and through some of the resources on our website and also through the Modern Classrooms Project itself. And we're always here by email if you have questions anytime. Yeah. Yeah, we've even got um, appointment slots on the SPD calendar. So if you want to like jump on with us for 15 minutes um, at any point, you can as well. Just uh, check the calendars and book some time with us. But uh, let's kind of dive into the exemplar units so we can take a look and see what some of these look like. Um, and you can get an idea from your specific sort of course and, and grade area. So I think, Matt, you put the link in the chat, right? Yeah, perfect. Um, so hop on there, pick one exemplar unit that kind of interests you, you know, piques your curiosity. Um, we'll give you like maybe about four minutes to kind of dive into that and just think about like, what are you seeing? Uh, what do you like that you're seeing? What would you change? And maybe what sort of supports would, would you need to be able to create units like this? Okay, so we'll give you about three or four minutes just to kind of dive into one.
Okay, so we've had about uh, four or five minutes to take a dive into some um, of the examples. Now, um, as we noted in, in our first cohort, you'll notice this is an American um, initiative. They're all American examples. Um, Long-term vision, it would be great to have a whole bunch of Ontario examples for, for units down the line. Um, but uh, baby steps, baby steps. Um, so uh, what did you notice? What did you wonder about um, some of those units that you were you were um, discovering over there? Uh, some some comments already in the in the in the chat. Anyone wants to hop on the mic and and share Moira? Uh, it's funny. I was reading Kate's uh, um, message or <laughs> writing on the side, and I thought exactly the same thing. It's how it goes, like step by step and that's the way i like to teach it as well so it's like okay this is so good and the videos and everything included there i thought it was very well organized so i'm like okay i really like this yeah the in the indigenous first nations literature unit also they were using color color coding which i thought was really clear in terms of like what the must do's the should do's inspire to do's um that that I think that would be helpful for students too. And I noticed Rachel, you said something similar to um, along those lines in terms of not every activity has all of those, which is interesting. Yeah, I, I usually end up diving into either the, the teacher PD examples or the math science examples, because that's sort of where my two loves are. But um, I think Jamie, you were talking about like social studies and like how do, how does that look in one of these you know this type of, of framework and so I dove into the uh, the economics one and yeah what's really interesting is not every lesson has all the components that go into what's considered like a classic modern classrooms lesson so if if a video doesn't work with that lesson and some sort of activity like I think their first activity was brainstorming everything that goes into making a Hershey's kiss. Um, and so doing that versus just watching a video about it is is more meaningful to the learning. So you don't need to include every every component every single time. Yeah, one of the beauties about this is it's so it is so flexible and it can be incorporated into like if you're doing inquiry and project based learning like this goes nicely into it so um mm -hmm. it's very like customizable very flexible like don't don't watch it's bossy don't watch these things and think that that's how you have to do it you can play around with it there's freedom there mm -hmm. I also really like the term soft and hard deadline. It's in the one of the English examples, but I'm dealing with that. I do e-learning right now, which is already very much set up like this because I was asked to release the entire course's content as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But I'm dealing with that right now because I've said to students, if you need flexibility, that's fine, but I can't read your mind. So you have to like, send me an email so that I'm not chasing 10 of you. And I like the idea because I feel like right now I've kind of presented my my deadlines all as hard deadlines with exceptions, but maybe rephrasing it will help them kind of guide themselves a little more and be more independent with their choices. Yeah, that was cool. I was in the drama one or intro to acting and it had like do in, in quotation marks and then closed. And I thought, oh, that's like a nice way to you know, it gives them some wiggle room, like you said, Sarah, and like, it's just different phrasing. So it's not like, you know, <laughs> what they're used to. It just changes their mindset a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't we move forward? Just cognizant of the time. Um, so if we piqued your interest and uh, you want to dive in, um, let's do it. All right. So I'm going to put in a a form to register for the series and we're modeling the series very much on the structures of the modern classrooms project so um every every week that we meet we're going to have must do's should do's and aspire to do's and for this first week uh, getting ready for week two which will be two weeks from now is to register for the, the learning series um on using that Google form that I just shared in the chat. Um, and then you're gonna complete the first two modules of the 
um, Modern Classrooms Project free course. And then you're going to find and bookmark the Our Shift website um, to f so that you can find the self-paced re resources that we shared there. So those are the three must-dos for uh, to, to get on board with it, all right? We're, we're not creating this training. We're just following along with the free online course that already exists on the Modern Classrooms Project and um, kind of talking about it in, in supporting each other as we go through it. Um, the should do's, uh, once you're registered, we will uh, we will loop you into our um, self-paced learning uh, Google chat that we have going on um, and to participate in our uh, open chat, you know, say hello, what what classes you teach and how you think you might be using this. And then uh, start to think about a unit that you want to plan to to do using this kind of, this kind of learning style. And then an Aspire to do is, you know, try to record your own instructional and video that the, one of the model, one of the models, uh, modules rather on the free course is about recording those instructional videos. Um, and so after you dive into that, see if you can use some of the, the tips that Kareem shares in that course and um, do that. Um, and last but not least, uh, the Modern Classrooms Project uh, Facebook group is a really, really great supportive resource. Uh, we're in it. So there's like 2,500 teachers, I think, in this Facebook group. Uh, posting questions uh, little and big all the time and getting lots of uh, responses. And it's moderated by the Modern Classrooms Project themselves. So you know that the, the, the answers um, that you're getting will not kind of throw you off track and, and, and whatnot as well. So um, there, there's the must do's, should do's, and aspire to do's for two weeks from now. All right. Um, so the form, as I said, is in the chat if you're interested in registering to learn alongside with us. And hope to see you two weeks from now. So thank you for coming today. Um, till we meet again. Uh, we're going to have things at the same bat time, same bat channel. But and when you register on our form, we will send you the invite uh, link to the meets in the Google Calendar to all the sessions because we offer them at a couple different times. And so you can choose the time that works for you. But if you're able to RSVP, just RSVP to the one that you can come to, just so we have an idea of how many people are attending, um, then that would be great. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I completed the form before. When are we getting the links? I completed so, this two days ago. So I don't know if I, I got maybe in the wrong... <laughs> yeah, no, we, we didn't fully expect anyone to be jumping onto the form before now. So I'll take a look after this session and start adding people to the uh, Google chat and to the calendar invites. Okay, fine. thank you. Because I yeah. cannot do it again. It says that I've already completed. That's that's no, that's, that's fine. That's we fine. Got we got it. Got you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um. So try and join the Google chat. It's not at, like uh, the only um, rooms I'm getting are Mills Club room. Yeah. yeah so we need to team. we need to add you to it. Okay. okay, all right, okay cool. Yeah. I was like, I don't think yeah. any of these are the shift team. <laughs> yeah. No. We'll we'll uh, take the responses from the form and I'll add you to the chat group and then I'll add you to the calendar invites. All right. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful and piqued your interest a little bit and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Great. Thank you Thanks, so much. Guys. Yeah. Thanks guys.